In this video, we're going to look at how to install PowerShell Universal into uh, IIS inside Windows. So I am actually running um, Windows 11 here. Um, it'll look slightly different when you enable the features in um, Windows Server, but uh, in this case, um, once you've done that, uh, all the steps are the same. So I don't have IIS installed. Um, I am going to check that, and then you're going to see that it's going to enable some things like Management Console, um, some application settings. The one thing that you're going to have to dig in and make sure that you enable is the WebSocket protocol. This is required by um, uh, the dashboard and it does provide some features for uh, the admin console as well. So you'll want to enable that. So this is going to go ahead and install IIS and then from there we can create our PowerShell Universal instance and um, get it configured. Now that we've installed IIS, uh, we want to uh, install a feature for running um, PowerShell Universal. So PowerShell Universal is a .NET um, Core application or ASP.NET Core application. So it requires a special hosting bundle to run inside IIS. So uh, I actually got that from the Microsoft's website and it's the .NET hosting bundle. Um, and you can see that I got version 6.0.9 for uh, version 3.3 of PowerShell Universal. We only change .NET um, major versions um, when we do a major version upgrade. So uh, when we go to PowerShell Universal 4, we'll release, um, well, you'll want to use the .NET hosting bundle version 7. So I am installing uh, version 6 here. This is just going to install a couple things into IIS so that I can run PowerShell Universal. So now that's done. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to open up a file explorer and I'm going to navigate to C inetpub wwroot. This is the, where the default website is um, actually installed. From there, I can take all the files from uh, my PowerShell uh, Universal zip here and um, we're just going to replace everything that's in this directory uh, with PowerShell Universal's files. So we'll do that. So while that's going, I'm going to open up IIS and we're going to configure the application pool and the website. So first of all, the default app pool has been created. You can create a new app pool if you like. I'm just going to use the default app pool. The settings would be the same if you created a new one. A couple things that we're going to change are in basic settings. Um, I want to leave this the same and in Advanced settings, I'm going to have start mode on always running. Um, I am going to say the idle timeout to zero because I don't want um, PowerShell Universal to stop. Especially, This is especially important for if you're running jobs. You may notice your jobs aren't running and that's because PowerShell Universal is not actually running inside IIS. So there are a lot of like settings obviously in here that you can set up. Um, one that I like to set uh, is this regular time interval. I like setting that to zero, so it just doesn't recycle it. Um, kind of like when you're running PowerShell Universal in a standard um, MSI install, it never shuts down, so you can kind of expect that to work the same inside IES. The other thing that you're going to want to set is um, in advanced settings here for the website, uh, you're going to set preload to true. All right, so now that everything is configured inside here, um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to check on this. So we're just going to wait for um, this particular extraction to complete. Now that we've extracted our files, we're going to need to unblock them um, because when you download things from the internet on Windows, it puts a little security information in there saying that this came from the internet. And uh, if you don't remove that, uh, PowerShell will not actually load scripts and modules. So I'm actually going to open terminal as administrator. I am going to go to the INET pub folder and then from there I'm going to get all the files and unblock them. So that will remove that little security identifier and then PowerShell Universal should be able to successfully load those files. So now that that's done, been done, let's actually go to IIS and I'm going to go to the app pool and I'm just going to stop this app pool and then uh, restart this app pool. So that kind of just restarts um, PowerShell Universal. And if we click our website now, we can click Browse uh, 80, and it's going to navigate to PowerShell Universal. And now you can see PowerShell Universal is up and running. So if I actually log in, 
um, it is going to behave just like any other um, you know, PowerShell Universal instance, except now it's being hosted in IIS. So IIS is behaving as a proxy between um, users accessing PowerShell Universal and PowerShell Universal itself. So um, you can see that PowerShell Universal currently is actually running in the in-process mode where we don't actually have the PowerShell or the universal.server.exe running. Uh, we're actually running directly in W3WP, which is the, um, the IIS um, kind of website hosting process. Um, but we do also support out of process hosting too. Um, in process can be potentially faster, but it also has other issues. Um, IIS has a lot of configuration settings, and I would only recommend IIS if um, there's a reason you'd like to use it. Uh, it does, it can be kind of finicky in terms of ensuring your app pool stays running. The settings I showed you. Um, today should keep your app pool up and running so that you don't run into issues with jobs. Um, but just know that it's easier to run the MSI and configure it that way. Um, but if your organization requires IIS or if you uh, like IIS, um, it, this is how you configure PowerShell Universal to run inside IIS.